All right, so today we're gonna to be talking about our back to school bundle. Um, when we start school at the beginning of the year, we do have an assessment that we do with the kids. It's not really fun, um, but what is fun is seeing the progress they make as the year goes on. So I kind of wanted to just unpack the back to school bundle for you. I'm actually using this in my classroom right now. So the first week or two of school, before we get into our year long curriculum, we're really just assessing the kids. We're doing you know, processes and procedures. So even if you're doing this in your homeschool setting or in your classroom, you're still setting up those procedures and processes. This is what we do first thing in the morning. You might use your morning basket. This is what we're gonna be doing after that. And so you're setting up your what your day is gonna look like. So the first week or two, this is what we're gonna use. I'm gonna kind of, like I said, unpack the parts that we have in it. Um, the, this is what you're gonna see. So it's called the Back to School Bundle. It's going to be in the, the KG Picks of the Week. Um, we have a student assessment piece, um, of like a kind of a, like an overview. So I use this to kind of give me a quick snapshot of what I'm doing with the kids. Um, I do this, I kind of put all the information on this after I do the assessment with the kiddos. So for me, this is just a really good way of me looking at the child whole, like the whole picture of the child and seeing if there's places that I really need to focus on. So looking at it, you can tell that we have, obviously we have the name and we have AP and AP3. So what that means is assessment period one and assessment period three. And you're gonna notice in some of the curriculum that you can do assessments more often and that's only if you feel like you wanna just kind of take a snapshot of that. So we always do our letter recognition, we do our letter sounds, we're gonna break that up and I'm gonna show you that. We're gonna do sight words, writing, handwriting, and reading, but for this video, I'm not focusing on these parts. This is gonna come probably in about four weeks in the curriculum because I really wanna focus on some of the basics right now. We're gonna do a little bit of phonemic awareness, number recognition, and all that kind of stuff. So this is the student assessment form. Like I said, you can use this, but you don't have to. Um, the first thing we do, let me kind of keep that as my reference, is we do their letter sounds. So we made you little flashcards. So these are what you're gonna give your child. You're gonna cut them up. I recommend putting them in a different order. We don't want them to just go from A, B, C, and you know, going in the chronological order of the alphabet, because we don't know if they're just you know, singing the ABCs or if they really know the letters. So this is what cut up, this is what we're gonna put in front of the child, and then this is what we're gonna be using to, oh, hi kitty. This is what we're gonna be using to um, monitor or kind of mark it. Again, you can notice that we have four quarters. We only do two at this point. I always use a blue pen for the first quarter and then I use a red pen for the second quarter. So it's gonna show me where that growth is. So as they're doing their letters, I'm finding the letters on here. I'm gonna circle the ones that they know and I'm gonna leave the ones that they don't know empty. What I typically do is if they say another letter, so for example, a lot of times they might mix up the P and the, D, or the B and the D. They might call this a D. Um, they might call the Y an X. So I am gonna make a mark of what the letter is that they said, just so I can refer back to it and say, okay, these are the letters they're mixing up. Um, but if they don't say the correct letter, then obviously I'm gonna leave it uncircled, but I am going to kind of make some anecdotal notes of what they did. Um, this is gonna be done a different day than the uppercase. So if you notice in our curriculum, we don't typically teach the uppercase letters. And the reason for that is because if you notice, they're all very visually similar. And so, and when we do writing, we typically teach them the lowercase letters. They're only gonna be needing, you know, at the beginning, two or three uppercase letters, and that's the beginning of their first and last name. So I do the uppercase letters um, because I wanna just see if they know them, but I'm not focusing more on, I'm not focusing a lot on those, I'm focusing more on the lowercase letters. So the first part of the assessment, like I just said, is our letters. Um, I do, one day I'll do letters, and then the next day I'll do letter sounds. The great thing is if you notice that your child does not have a lot of letter sound knowledge, if you go to our YouTube channel and put in I say, you say, that's probably the most popular video we have. It's the way we do our letter sounds and movements. So I have a lot of families that 
are like, oh my gosh, we use that every day. You know, it's kind of our, you know, start of our day. I actually use it in my classroom. Um, I put me on the, um, in my iPad and I used it just because I haven't been teaching for a couple weeks. Um, so I want to make sure that I'm doing the same movements that I'm using with the kids from the years prior. So we've got letter sounds and movements. Um, the next part that we're going to go over is, um, like I said, I'm not doing sight words quite yet um, or writing, handwriting, and reading. I'm going to wait on that stuff. Another part of it is just your simple shapes. So I, and again, this is really cute sometimes when you have the kids. Um, I had one little girl yesterday call that a ball, um, and then she called that a door. So obviously that's not the correct names of the shapes, but I am going to write that down um, just in my anecdotal notes, because I think it's cute that she wrote that, knowing, said that, eventually knowing that she's going to get the shapes. Um, I don't expect them to know the hexagon, pentagon, octagon, but I am gonna put that on there because I want them eventually to be able to know those. So these are the shapes. Again, I'm gonna circle them or put a little um, star next to them if they know them, and then I'm gonna leave it empty if they don't know them. The next part of the assessment is our letters. So the way I do this is I always mark the date that I'm gonna do it. You again have options to do it um, three or four times throughout the year just to spot check them, but we typically just do the beginning of the year and the end of the year. Um, in a homeschool setting, you've got a little bit more time um, because you don't have as many kids in the classroom as we have. So if you wanna kinda do that spot check, again, it's more for the excitement of seeing their growth and sharing that growth with them. So um, feel free to do it in October and January and March and just kind of really monitor that growth as they're doing it. Um, don't expect to see better handwriting if you're not practicing handwriting. Um, at the Reading Corner, we practice handwriting every day. It is the most tedious part of our job, I'm not gonna lie. Um, kids automatically go from top to bottom and they automatically go clockwise when they're writing their letters, like their G and their A. And kids are supposed to start at two o'clock and touch the bottom line and make a straight line down. So they're supposed to go counterclockwise. So if we're practicing handwriting a little bit every day, you're gonna see that grow. So what I do is I just say, this is the letter A, can you make an A in this box? This is the letter H, can you make an H in this box? And you know, guys, I just finished these assessments in my classroom. I have some kids that can write the letters and I have some kids that just put little scribbles. And that's fine. For me, those guys that put just little scribbles, I'm like, okay, we're gonna see a lot of growth. So I'm not you know, um, frustrated by it. If you go on our YouTube channel, we do have handwriting lessons. I typically start with a certain set of letters. So just go on there, practice them. Don't fly through all the different lessons. Use one for a good, gosh, five, six, seven weeks until you're ready to move on to the other one. You'll start to see when your child has mastered them. They're quick videos, they're about five minutes, so you might even want to do one or two um, throughout the week and kind of mix them up. But you're gonna see really a lot of growth in the handwriting assessment when you really are practicing handwriting every day. So that's the handwriting assessment. The next part is writing your letters in alphabet. So for this one, I don't give any direction except for let's see how many letters you can write. Uh, you might see that your child is writing all uppercase letters. You might see that your child is writing just a string of letters. You might see that your child can write the letters A through um, Z. But again, what I'm really looking for is how they're forming their letters. Are they starting at the top and coming down or are they starting at the bottom and coming up? So it's just observation. Anything that I wanna make some anecdotal notes on, I just turn it over on the back and make notes on it. Anything, the more anecdotal notes you can write about a child, the better, so that when you do go back to it in your second assessment period, you're like, oh, that's right, I remember they were doing those kind of things, or those are the behaviors I was noticing when they were doing handwriting. Um, when I do my number assessment, I actually tell them, let's start at the beginning and let's write the number one, and I actually just go up to 10 right now. If they don't know a letter or a sound or a shape, I don't say, yeah, I just say, that's okay and let's move on. Um, this is not for them to feel like they don't know anything, it's about them being able to shine on what they do know. So again, I ha will have kids that can write all the way to the letter 10. I can have kids that maybe are writing the eight backwards or the five backwards or the three backwards. It's just to have those, those observations so I know what I'm gonna be focusing on when we're doing our handwriting or our letter writing. 
The next part is our numbers. And again, guys, this isn't fun. Like, I don't really enjoy doing assessments, but what assessments do is they drive your curriculum. So in a homeschool setting, it's really great because you can see what areas your child really is um, are gaining and excelling in and what um, sections your child might need to slow down in. Regardless, if you're doing this assessment and you're pairing it with our year-long curriculum, because our year-long curriculum has those eight weeks of um, you know, continuous activities um, unpacked into a 24-week curriculum, you will see that you're still doing all the activities, but those areas that they might have to have a little more weakness in, they're gonna be picking those up really quickly. So I purposely don't do in order, one, two, three, four, five, because I want to see if they can see it in isolation. So I might start with the two, and then I might move to the six, I might move to the seven, and all I'm saying is what number is this? What number is this? I'm putting a little star or a circle if they got it, or I'm leaving a blank if they don't. If you have a child that, and I have many of them, that if I don't put a star or circle, they're like, why didn't you star or circle it? Then that's where this comes in, where you can just have this on a clipboard and you can be making notes so that they're not feeling like I'm not doing a good enough job because I'm noticing that not all of the letters are getting circled or the numbers getting circled. So you can just make the notes on here and then afterwards put those on there. So I start with the, um, obviously the numbers one through 10 and then I go up to 20. Most of my kids right now do not know their teen numbers. So they might know the 10. Um, it's very typical for them to say 12 for 20 and 20 for 12. I've noticed that in the assessments that I was doing um, this week with my kids. Um, so again, it's just, uh, they're not really going to know up to 20, especially if you're taking it and putting it in a different order, but they will by the end of the year, which is really great. Um, this is our patterns. So you notice we have a lot of different patterns. So I do tell them, okay, this is the first pattern, yellow, blue, green, what do you think comes next? A lot of kids will say white or empty because they see that the, the box is empty. So I say, okay, your job is to fill in those squares to complete the pattern. So I kind of use that verbiage. And then I say, I'm gonna say the colors again, and then I want you to see if you can use crayons and do the rest of it. And so I just say yellow, blue, green, and then we keep going on. And it's very common for them not to know their um, patterns. If they don't know that first pattern, the ABC pattern, I don't move on to the next patterns. Um, because again, as we're going through the assessment throughout the year, you'll see that they're gonna start mastering those patterns. But if they don't know that first pattern, the next ones get primarily more difficult. So I am going to make sure that um, I just stop at that point. The next one is name writing. And I just say, let's see how you write your name. Uh, they might scribble it, they might not write anything, they might write circles, they might write their first name and their last name, they might write some uppercase and some lowercase, and that's fine. It's just to kind of capture where they're at at this point. The next part is our color assessment. So if you notice, we have three different quarters that we're using. So I'm just going to face this in front of the child and I'm just gonna say, do you know this letter color? Do you know this color? Do you know this color? And again, circle them or star them. If I notice that a child is just continually saying, I don't know it, I don't know it, I don't know it, I step back and I just say, do you see any colors that you do know? And they might say, oh, I see that's red and that's black and that's it. So if I'm, I'm not gonna keep going through every single color, or every single letter or every single number, if I'm seeing that they don't know it, I'm just gonna take a step back and say, you tell me which ones you do know. And if they say, I don't know any, that's fine. That's why we have the year long curriculum because if kids are coming in with no knowledge of majority of the things in the assessment, what you're just gonna see is a lot of growth throughout the year, which is awesome. If you feel that the color and the shape chart is a little too overwhelming, especially if you have a three-year-old or just beginning four-year-old, you can use this color chart. And basically, we're just gonna go over what the different colors are, and then we just put really simple shapes to go from. So that's kind of a big bundle. Um, let me kind of talk through it a little bit again. My point of having an assessment is to just show a snapshot of where the child is starting and where they're ending. So you don't have to get this all done in one week. You can take little pieces of it, maybe do a little every Monday, but try to get it done within that first month of school so that you can, once you get into May and you're doing the ending of it, you're really gonna see that growth. I wanna get as little information out of them as possible at the beginning. I don't wanna teach them too much and then do the assessment because if I do that, then I'm not really getting a very good snapshot of where they started with. 
If you feel frustrated after you do this assessment, that's really where the year-long curriculum comes in. I assure you that if you have a lot of gaps and a lot of places where your child is not um, showing knowledge or um, familiarity with the letters and things like that, that year-long curriculum, you're gonna find that growth. So um, message me if you have any questions about the assessment. There's a lot of good stuff in there. So if you go on the website, you're gonna see a place that says KG's Picks of the Week. And so all it's gonna say is Back to School Bundles. So click on that in both of them. Use what you feel like your child is ready for. And then we're gonna move on to getting you started in our classroom. I want to go over another piece of the back to school bundle and that's our portfolio. Um, if you're like me, you set great intentions of I'm going to do a portfolio and I'm going to keep little pieces of you know, my kids work throughout the year and it somehow just doesn't happen. So I'm going to give you some tips on what I do in the classroom. Um, I have tried to do this with my kids for several years and then I end up just with this big old drawer of all their artwork and some of their writing samples and stuff like that. I forget to date things. So what I do is I get one of those just kind of white um, bins, the file bins from like Office Depot or whatever you have. And then I get different colors. I have like red folders for everyday stuff. And then I have um, green folders or blue folders for portfolio. So I teach the kids and in a homeschool setting or in a classroom, I teach them very early on how to file their stuff. Um, and so as I'm doing things with the kids, if I feel like this is like a big moment, like they kind of took a break, you know, like a big stepping stone in their writing or something like that, I'm going to put it in their portfolio. I try to keep a handwriting sample and a writing sample every um, month. So, and I, I really try to stay on top of the portfolio. Um, in years past, we spend like the last month trying to put all these portfolios together and we typically have 20 kids in our classroom, so that takes every, like, so much time. So I try to do it on Fridays. So anything that I've put into those portfolio files, I'm gonna take out, I'm gonna put a sleeve, and I'm gonna immediately put it into their binders so that as the year goes on, it's just kind of growing itself. Um, I try to date things as much as possible. Uh, but in that back to school bundle, the first part of it was the assessment. You can't do it wrong. Um, basically, however you did the assessment in the first quarter is how you're gonna do it in the last quarter. It's really supposed to just be a snapshot of where your child's at. So this is our portfolio. Um, it says my portfolio, obviously the reading corner. Um, if you're not using the reading corner curriculum and you're just using this portfolio piece, that's fine. You just might wanna leave this part out. We do a self inventory. So I started this with my kids when they were little and I wish I would have kept up with it, but a lot of them, I haven't kept up with it. Um, but it was just a really neat way of seeing like what their, they thought their favorite color was and what their favorite toy was and what their favorite um, movie was. Um, it's fun to say like if you, and like with my favorite dinner, sometimes I'll say, okay, if you are not eating dinner at home, where do you like to eat dinner? Like where's your favorite place to go to dinner and things like that. So it kind of just, it's fun to see that their interests kind of change from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. So we do have in green, we had the beginning of the year. And then in the um, spring we have in red, we have the end of the year. And then we do a self portrait. So I personally do just a quick model of a self portrait for the kids um, when we start. Just how to make a circle, I might put the two eyes, I might put the smiley face, things like that. Not that I want them to copy what I'm doing, but I do want it to kind of show the growth of how they make people at the beginning of the year and at the end of the year. Because what it's showing me is their fine motor skills, their ability to see how big things are in relation to other things. So at the beginning you might see a really big face and then like really small hands or really big hands and a really small face. So it kind of just shows with that as well. Um, but I'm not trying to look for perfection. I think it's really neat to see how they go from the beginning of the year to the end. So of course we have those in here as well. Um, so things that I add to the portfolio are writing samples, um, drawings that they've done. A lot of times when they do a drawing, I might I always ask for permission and I say, do you mind if, if they say like, what is this a picture of? And sometimes they have these elaborate stories. I'll say, do you mind if I put on the back what you wrote about or said? So I might just jot down those things because so many times we'll go back to some really cute drawing and we just don't even know what it is. And your child doesn't even know what it is. Sometimes even the next day, they don't know. 
So it's nice to be able to say, do you remember when you wrote this um, and you, you know, this was what this picture was about? I might ask if I can label some of the things on the picture, um, especially if it's a very detailed picture. Um, and they have like a slide with a little water park and like they have, you know, our snack over here or something like that. So I'll ask them if I can add those things. My kids are older and I'll go back to the portfolios of my older two and I see so much of these anecdotal notes in what I've done with them and it's just so fun for them to see their growth as they were writing. My youngest, I don't even think he has a portfolio. So um, I do encourage you if you have young ones just to kind of start doing this, writing little notes on the back of things so that you can remember what they're about. Um, so I, like I said, I do pictures, I'll do um, writing, I'll do a couple handwriting samples. If I've seen like a jump, like for example, if we're doing CVC words, consonant, vowel, consonant, and I haven't been able to see them putting letters to it, and then finally I see that they're putting the beginning letter or they're being they're able to write all the letters or they have something where they wrote a sight word the correct way, I'm gonna put a big star by that, I'm gonna date it, I'm gonna put it in their portfolio. So it's just showing the growth as they're going through it. Um, in the year-long curriculum, as we've talked about, it is a 24-week, and then there is holiday stuff in there. So, so I'll keep some of the holiday stuff just for fun, but I also will just keep snippets of those that year-long curriculum. Again, when I see some growth or they've really mastered a concept, I'll kind of stick it in that portfolio as they master it. So when you look back in the entirety of the year, you're seeing where they master concepts, and it's just really fun. And then we just have some really cute little um, certificates. So if you know, at the Reading Corner, we're big on our literacy stories and our flip and reads and our book charts. So every time one of the kids um, finishes their book chart, we do date it and we put it in their portfolio. The neat thing is that by the end of the year, you'll probably see that they've mastered like, or completed like 10 to 15 book charts. So it's really neat to see um, that they've done that. We have book chart videos. If you have questions about the book chart, just message me. Um, and then at the end of the year, we just have some congratulations. So we do thank you for being a superstar reader. Um, in our school, we have class models. So we want to celebrate them. Um, thank you for completing or congratulations on completing either VPK or preschool, um, whatever you guys kind of need. Those are our portfolio pieces and this is kind of like the framework of it. But like I said, you can put so many different things in your portfolio. Again, my recommendation is that you just keep up with it because we always get to the end of the year and we haven't done that. And then we're spending like weeks on weeks on weeks trying to keep that up. So. Um, the next video I'm gonna do is going back into the back to school bundle. We've got lots of stuff in there and I wanna kinda of go unpack the rest of it. So stay tuned.